Let's share the screen. <clears throat> Okay, I hope that everyone can see it. Um, so my name is Bruno, as Antonio already mentioned. I am a software engineer in Utility Warehouse. And today we'll be talking a bit about uh, how to release Go binaries the easy way. So the first thing that we have to do is create something. So we have to make an uh, application. So the easiest way to do it is create a Hello World. But let's do a different one. So let's say Hello and Go first of course, with emojis. And once you have this, you save this in probably a main.go file and you want to build it because you need to run it somewhere, right? So to do this, you can call go build main.go. With this, you create a binary which you'll be able to run in probably your machine. So if you use a Mac OS, you'd be able to use in Mac OS. You'll not be able to run in Linux, but if you were in a company, most likely you'll be running something on a Linux server. So how do you do? Usually you just use JOS Linux and put the architecture, it's fine. But we are going beyond that. So let's say that we want to create a CLI. So if we want to create a CLI, we want more operational systems, architectures, and easily you end up with something like this, a make file with many, many calls to this Go build. But it's, it will work, it will work. It's a bit of a trouble, but it'll work. Once you have all the binaries, you need to release. Uh, I will use GitHub here because it's the tool that I use, but you can use GitLab, Bitbucket if it's not down, but you can use many of these tools. So in GitHub, you have this release page where you tag some version, push your, your tag, then you can include, of course, um, a description, which will be usually your change log. Like some people don't include anything, but it, it's really helpful for the users. And finally, all those binaries, you need to attach them manually on the attached binaries there. And then you publish the release, done, easy, right? It's really easy for like for one or two versions, but if you keep doing this, if you keep repeating, it kind of, it kind of seems too much uh, work to just release some binaries. So as I'm a, I'm a developer and I'm lazy by nature. That's why I automate things for my job. I automate things for me and for other people. And I was like, there should, there's probably a way to do this. And there is. There is this tool called Go Releaser. And Go Releasers allow, I would say that they have three main pillars for me. One of them, they simplify the releaser, releases. So with one file, you do build and release. So you don't need to, to do make files for one thing and then go manually do other things. Second, it allows you to deploy in multiple channels. When I mean multiple channels is you can deploy in GitHub as I've shown, you can deploy in Docker. So for example, if you have something that will go to Kubernetes, for example, it will deploy there as well. And you can deploy in Brew, for example, Brew, Snap, and even for Windows. So it depends a lot of in your configs. And finally, it's really, really easy to integrate with CI. So if you circle CI, GitHub Actions, they have many examples and it's literally really easy to integrate. So first of all, of course, we'll need to install it. So depending on the operational system, there are different ways, but once installed in the, in the directory that you are, you just call go releaser in it. With this, it will create this YAML file. And I personally don't like YAML files, but in this case, it's fine. It's not that big. It's not like a Kubernetes manifest that's kind of can get really big. So once you have your YAML file, you get into YAML file and it, I will go through the basics here. It's not going to be like, if you want with more details, of course, the documentation is super rich. So the first thing, and it's required, is defining your project name. Uh, here I'll just call in cool project. Then this build section, you just point to where your main file is. So in this case, CMD main go. And of course, you need to specify which operational systems and architectures. Here you can see, I just using a really wide op, uh, option. So from Linux to Windows, from uh, 32 bits to 64 and even ARM. So this would run basically everywhere. So here you can even specify more things. You can specify, for example, environment variables to disable Seagull or enable it. You can put meta tags, so LD, the LD flags and other things. 
So having that, you have the build process. It will just uh, create the binaries for you. But you remember when I mentioned like you should create a change log. Some people will say, ah, it's too hard, too much work. And you can, um, you can create like a change log based on your commits. You just filter some of your commits and then you, boom, you have a change log. It's that easy, it comes out of box. Um, and this one, okay, so this one, archives, it's by default, Go Releaser will give you a tar. And we know Windows users, they use zips usually, or rars. And rars is a really funny word in English, by the way. And if you want to, to release in a zip file, you need to put a format override to format to zip. And not only that, if your project is open source, most likely you want to include extra files such as license or a manual. So to do this, you can specify the files that you want to include besides your binary, of course. But if you want to be an anarchist, you can actually just wipe this whole thing and just use format binary. It will just give straight away the binary. You don't have to care about the license or readme or anything. You just rely on them checking GitHub or whatever, whatever you're uh, deploying this. And for me, one of the most cool things is it deploys to Docker. It, uh, I use Docker Hub. So I, at work, I, we use Kubernetes, uh, personal projects, I use Docker Compose. And it's really cool when you have some small server that you create some code there, and then you can straight away get from a Docker repository. And it allows you to create different templates. So here, for example, you have the first one, it's a tag. So you just use, usually you'll be using Semver. So you have D1.1.1, and there you go. You just have this tag. But then it's a patch, right? So it will increment the minor version as well, automatically for you. And probably is a master, so it will bump the latest version. So everyone that's just getting the bleeding edge, they will get the, from the latest. And in this case, I usually use a Docker file, a, a local one and a production one to different instructions. So you can specify a different Docker file depending on your needs. And if you want, for example, to have an Alpine and an Ubuntu image, you can create an extra because this is an array at the end. So you can create an extra image template just for that. And finally, uh, from the configs bits, one thing that for me was really magical, it's the brew. So I use Mac for a while now, and I was always amazed, like, look, I can do brew install some tool. And I, I always thought it was quite complex to do this. And with Go Releaser, it's so simple. You just need to create a repository called homebrew-tab or whatever, like I specify here at the name, as you can see, and you create a folder called formulas. So once Go Releaser pushes and deploys something and releases something, it will push um, a formula for the specific project inside of this repository. So people can just do brew install your tool. It's amazing, it's really easy. I was like, I, I thought that would be some caveat, there is none. And of course, there are some configs for Windows as well, even for Linux to, to create the RPM and dev packages. So yeah, that it's it. Like the config file will be probably not that big, probably be copy and pasting something, some stuff from the docs. And once you are happy with it, you have some features, what do you do? You tag the version. So again, I'm using Semver here. By the way, there was a really interesting talk some time ago in Gophers London. So if you don't know what is Semver, have a look on this talk. And you can just do, you just tag it. You need to get a GitHub token because part of it is creating a releasing, releasing GitHub. So to create this, you need API access. So it's really easy to get this on the developer uh, dashboard. And finally, you call Go Releaser. Um, if you're if your first time, I would recommend to use Skip Publish and Snapshot because it will not actually push any release or anything. It will just give your binaries, it will give the image. So you kind of, you can test some stuff locally at least for the first run. Once it's done, it's done. You just run Go Releaser and it will use it automatically. And you know if it doesn't work because or it's going to explode or it's going to make your machine super slow because remember it will be running multiple Go builds at the same time. But okay, with this, you have like a release page, a beautiful release page. As you, as you can see, it generates the change log, the Docker images, uh, probably being Docker Hub as well. And depending on, of course, your provider and the archives, the assets with the binaries. But I am, I still, I'm still lazy. I don't want to 
we have to remember to install tooling and ask people around to install tools. So how do I integrate with CI tools? For those who don't know, CI tools are like basically continuous integration tools. It will allow me, for example, to run build, test, linting, and then finally, after everything passed, release somewhere. To do this, I'm going to use Circle CI here. It's the one that I am fam familiarized, but GitHub, it will work with GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, and so on. So I'm going to go quite quickly because it's quite vendor specific, this one. But you have a workflow I'm defining here, as you guys can see. I'm basically ignoring any branch because I don't care about, for example, some release branch somewhere or some feature branch. And I'm only caring for tags, specific sender tags. So once you have one of these tags, it will run the release job. And the job itself, it's really easy. I copied, I guess I copied, if I can remember, but I copied from the docs. The only difference is if you're deploying to, to Docker, you need to add Docker login here. So you need to set environment variable with your username, password, and if a specific repository, add this repository as well. Finally, you just download Go Releaser, run it, that's it. Once you have this file somewhere, and don't forget about the GitHub token, it needs to be set on, on, uh, as environment variable as well. Once it's set, you tag the version, basically creates a message, push it, and once it pushes, it triggers CircleCI automatically, it builds and releases your project straight away out of box. So it's really useful when you have an open source project and a team, because then everyone kind of relies that CircleCI being the source of truth of all your deployments. Finally, if you, if you want to have some examples, I have two projects that I have in my GitHub. So have a look in PWA server and Mermaid server. Like they have the CircleCI integration and the Go releaser uh, YAML. And yeah, that's it. I hope that you guys like learn something and can perhaps make your release or well build and release process easier. My Twitter, Slack and GitHub handle are is at Brunulis. And if you want to contact through email, there's contact at brunulis.net. Um, by the way, if you're searching for any position, uh, we at Utility Warehouse, we, are, we have open positions. So I'll be glad to, to answer questions about the talk or even if you're searching for some job. Um, that's it. I guess I have some time for uh, QA. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Bruno. That was really, really cool. I think I, I used this tool a while ago, like quite a long time ago, and I didn't realize how much they've, how many functionalities they've added. It looks really, really cool. So there are a couple of questions I can see on the chat. Um, uh, do you want to read them or do you want for me to read those? Um, um, let me have a look if there are like, uh, so. Yeah. One, yeah, one says, okay, love go release their question. Any way to release multi -arch architecture Docker images? So I suppose, I suppose that the, um, so multi architecture, right? Um, you can define, I haven't, when you say multi architecture, I'm not sure if you, what you exactly mean. You can have different Docker files. So I suppose that you can release different configurations. I just don't know. Um, what uh, what this will be exactly on the motor track. I know that you can have multiple. I just showed one, but you can add multiples. Um, cool. Okay, there is another question I think just arrived, like very similar. So maybe maybe if someone has more uh, questions on the multi-architecture, they can reach out to you directly and ask more. Yeah. And one is also, does this work with GitLab CI like it does with GitHub Actions? Uh, it's curious because it's, it seems that he's comparing something with GitHub. I haven't tried with GitHub Actions. As I mentioned, I usually use uh, CircleCI because it's my go, go to for a long time. But I guess that it should work fine because in their, in their uh, examples in the documentation, they have like uh, for GitLab, the GitHub and CircleCI. The only trick might be that you need to set up a different token because for GitLab, you have, uh, it's not GitHub token, of course. That's the only trick. The rest should be the same because you just download the binary and run against your Go releaser file and it, that's it. There's no extra trick on it. Cool. Okay.